Hello, my name is Ian McCall and this is another uh, of the videos from the Dermoscopy Made Simple series. Today we're going to look at uh, dermatified bromas. Now these are really quite uh, common tumors. It's interesting, you know, I've called them a tumor. Uh, Ackerman in fact feels that they're an inflammatory uh, reaction or the end result of an inflammatory reaction and we'll look at uh, some evidence for that a little bit later. However, they're very common lesions, usually seen in the lower leg in women, uh, more than in men. Cause is unknown. Thought perhaps to be a reaction to uh, insect bites, but uh, no one really knows. They can have a whole variety of dermatoscopic patterns, and I'll show you some of these uh, as we go on. But the classic one is to have a central white structureless area surrounded by some lines reticular. Central white structural area surrounded by lines reticular. However, they can also present with no white structureless area, or they can have brown circles centrally, or very rarely even lines radial peripheral. Now, the central vessels that you may see in this area can be dot, can be looped, or uh, even can be serpentine. And in inflamed lesions, dot vessels can surround the whole, uh, the whole lesion itself. And rarely you can get bleeding into a dermata fibroma, giving you a blue structureless uh, area. So, let's have a little look at some dermata fibromas. This is the classic dermata fibroma pattern. Here you can see the white central structureless area, and surrounding it you have this uh, network or uh, lines reticular. The lines reticular are really very obvious uh, here, and the white structureless area, occasionally you'll see a few blood vessels into it. Um, often it uh, has very angulated uh, areas here, signifying the scarring nature of the process, or at least the laying down of collagen. So there's the lesion here, this is it clinically, and this is the classic pattern white structural essentially with lines reticular uh, round about. Then you can have this one. Not quite as organized as the last, not quite as symmetrical. Again still this white structural central area, but you also have some brown circles here. And sometimes these can be quite extensive. Here you've still got your lines reticular around the outside, but it's a bit more broken up here as well. Notice the difference uh, in the nature of the lines reticular in different areas. And at a cursory glance, you might look at this and think that it's uh, an early melanoma. There was the lesion here. This is what it looked like clinically. These are these darker areas up here that we can see in the dermatoscopic image. But you can see how um, pinkish this in fact uh, is. And on first glance, you might think that this was uh, some form of amelanotic melanoma. The lines reticular are a reactive uh, process to the um, inflammation associated with the dermatic fibroma before. Note that I said it's an inflammatory condition. Now here's another one. These, this was to show the different types of vessels that you may in fact see here. Um, if we were to enlarge this, you'd see that there are um, some, let's take it right up, there are some looped vessels here. There are also some serpentine vessels. And I'm not sure if we had some dot ones uh, or not in this. Let's just get it down a little bit again. But you don't really want to rely on vessels to make a diagnosis of, uh, of dermatofibroma. If you've got a very pink dermatofibroma with little in the way of surrounding pigmentation, then the different uh, types of vessels here, especially if they're dot, some serpentine, and some looped uh, vessels, if you see that, you just might think that that's the pattern of a name melanotic melanoma. And sometimes it can be difficult to say, and you need to biopsy. Here's another one. This 
is pinker, in fact, uh, clinically. Again, that little brown haze around the outside. And this is what the vessels looked like in, uh, in this one. Now, again, um, there's a lot of uh, serpentine vessels here. Um, very symmetrical. There's some dot vessels associated with this as well. You might say that that's a looped vessel at the at the edges. So again, you might be considering this as a amelanotic melanoma. Now the thing is, there is this peripheral bit of pigmentation that you can see here too, and if you were to look at that closely, you'll find that it is lines retic. And of course, it's a clinical thing that usually gives a dermatofibroma away. It has that typical very hard feel and the dimpling sign when you press it between your thumb and your forefinger from side to side. Instead of popping out the way, it pops in the way. It's held in by this uh, fibrous tissue here. It tends to hold it down, or dimpling, it's called. But just note the variation in vessels that you can see in a, in a dermatofibroma. And there's this one. You can see this is virtually all pink. There's just the slightest haze of, uh, of brown round about that. But you might well think that that's um, a neomelanotic melanoma. And in point of fact, this is a very vascular dermatofibroma. And as I said before, Ackerman regarded these as inflammatory lesions rather than tumors. That what we see at the end is an end result of the inflammation that's occurring. Um, again, you've got this white structureless area here very little in the way of pigment round about, and the rest of it's um, vascular. So this would be a slightly difficult one to uh, diagnose dermatoscopically. Now here's another bizarre one. I have this listed as a dermatofibroma, but it might be an excoriated nodule. You know, a parigo nodule is a, a thickening of fibrous tissue, uh, epidermal acanthosis um, from chronic rubbing. It's a form of lichen simplex chronicus. And, uh, you know, both of these, the dermatofibroma and parigo nodule, have white structureless scarring in the center. Um, but usually the parigo nodule has dot vessels and lines, and we'll show you that at some later stage. But again, here you're almost looking at, um, you know, reticulated hypopigmentation here, what we used to call negative network. But uh, this, I've, as I say, I've got listed as an excoriated uh, traumatized dermatofibroma. Here's a dermatofibroma where you've hardly got any uh, white structureless area, and it's basically got lines reticular surrounding it. Um, there are also some brown circles in the center. Let's just make that a little bit bigger and we'll see if we can see them. Okay. These. What I was taking to be brown circles, some of them almost look filled in as if they're brown clods, and you can get brown clods in the center of uh, a dermatofibroma as well. You've still got your lined reticula around here on the outside. Um, whether these are brown circles or brown clods uh, is another issue. I think they're more brown clods and brown circles if you actually look at them. So this is the picture that you can in fact sometimes see. This is another one that uh, we sometimes see as well, another variant of uh, dermatofibroma. This is the lesion here. You can see the variation, the pink color and the variation in color in the center here, the dark blue. And it corresponds to this area here. Um, there is a hemosiderotic uh, variant of dermatofibroma that can look somewhat like this. Um, again, you've still got a little bit of brown rind to tick here. You've got some white structureless area, blue-gray structureless in here as well. You might think that's a blue clod. Altogether, an unusual uh, variant. But when you look at the histology, your fibroblasts are thick in the dermis and they're extending in between the fat lobules here as well. Um, and this is the pattern that you'll see in dermatofibromas. And lastly, we'll end with this lesion here. This is it clinically in this man's leg. He said this had been here for 20 uh, odd years, in fact nearly 30 years. When you look at it clinically, you've got this dome-shaped area, a bit of um, uh, sclerosis, 
and uh, some scabbing and the like on the surface or scale on the surface in these dark areas. And then when you have a look at it with the dermatofiber uh, with the dermatoscope, you've still got this white central scarred area, a bluish stru blue gray structureless area here, still some lined reticula around the outside. So it still has the basic elements of a dermatofibroma even when it's been around uh, for 20 years because they sometimes say dermatofibromas shrink with time and may just end up as a, a slightly uh, delved um, or uh, pigmented area. But this one has continued to thicken up, continued uh, to reach this sort of size even after 30 years. So dermatofibromas, you can diagnose them clinically better than any other particular way, but you appreciate the variation of the dermatoscopic images of these, the variation in the vessels, um, whether there is going to be um, a white structureless area or not a white structureless area as here, and uh, the classic pattern of still being the central white uh, scarred white structureless area and the surrounding uh, lines reticular. That's the classic pattern. That's what you're going to see most uh, most often. So, dermatofibromas. Interesting lesions can be mistaken for melanoma uh, of a melanotic type if they're very, very pink like this. And uh, if they're completely covered over with pigment in one form or another, again, can be easily confused with melanocytic lesions when really, as I say, they're an inflammatory process. Thank you very much.